everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. This morning, I am working on the last part of the cover, the cover, the Color Traveler Journal. And if you remember, I had, they're too fat to fit in the um, cracker box that I was going to use. So I ordered some very thin, um, oh, the chipboard. <laughs> And I glued two pieces together because I just thought it was a little too thin. So I glued two pieces together with Fabri-Tac. So I'm going to do five of these because I have green, purple, yellow, blue, pink signatures I need to put together. So I think I can get all the pieces out of here that I need because when I laid the signatures down, let me get one out of here. Whoa, come on. Well, they're starting to fight back. Um, this is These are the two blue signatures, and when I laid them down to try to figure out how wide I need to make the book, I took a ruler, which I have now misplaced. <laughs> Here it is. Uh, I took a ruler and I measured it at the, well, let me do it this way. I did it at the bottom. There's not enough room to do it this way. I mean the other way. So I took this and I laid it down. There's still not enough room. Son of a gun. Okay, anyway. I laid it down and moved it a little within the five inches across. So I'm going to make the front panel and the back panel five inches wide. Each one of these is 12 by 12. So that's 10 inches and then um, I'm going to need a spine, and I will make the spine out of whatever is left over from cutting the two five-inch wide whatever. See, it, I will cut it, I guess, cut it this way, and then it will leave me this bottom strip here to use for the spine on the, um, for the two signatures I have here. Now, some of these will be skinnier than others because the purple... I don't know, is it a little skinnier than that? Uh, nope. <laughs> well, shoot. Um, bad example. Here we go. For yellow. Well, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> That's just as fat as the others. Well, pooey. Um, so. All right, let me try this one. The pink one. Oh, my God. It's the same height. <laughs> they all sit at the same height. They're all very full. All right, so the green. <laughs> oh, you know, green's my favorite color, but it is the skinniest. Oh, it sits a little, a little less in height than these, but I probably will cut everything exactly the same because they're all basically the same thickness. And if they're not, it doesn't matter because it'll, this will be one signature and that will be it. This will be two signatures. And I will probably do, I don't know how I'm going to put them together yet. Um, I don't think I can do any fancy on the side stitching, you know, all the lovely decorative stuff. I don't think I can do that with one signature. With two, it limits what I can do. I think you need a little more, a few, a few more signatures in the book in order to do all the fancy stitching. We shall see. So I'm going to cut this, and when I get done cutting this, I will come back and probably mostly fast forward through this video because I'm sure you guys have seen me cut stuff and put stuff together like a million times. I have not decided what I'm going to cover each one with. I would like the color of paper to correspond with the inside of the book, like I want pink with pink, blue with blue. I wasn't going to do that. What I was initially going to do is cover it with white paper and then the stitching along the spine would correspond with the color inside the book, but I see that is not going to work. So what I might do is cover the book in a very basic color, shade of pink, blue, green, yellow, all that. And then the spine I might... Um, I think I can do, if I cut the strips out for the spine here, I can cover them with colored paper or white, and then I can do a hidden, hidden 
spine where I sew the um, I sew the book into the first part of the spine with the three hole pamphlet stitch then take another spine that's covered and I've done decorative stitching on it and glue that on top of the other one where you could see the three hole pamphlet stitch you won't see that anymore you'll see it'll be like double sandwiched because I want to do the decorative I want to teach myself how to do the decorative stuff on the side but I don't have enough signatures to do that which I thought I was going to when there were one two three four five I think there's seven signatures because some of them are double five six seven I think there's seven signatures because some of them are double but they're so fat that I cannot use the original chipboard from the cracker box I wanted to use so I think this might I might be able to do the decorative stitching for the spine and glue that on top of the spine that has the three hole pamphlet stitch showing and cover it up with the yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Let me cut all this stuff and I'll come back. Okay, so I've made the um, covers for some of the others, and I'm down to my last two, but they're going to be exactly the same, so I'm going to show you how I did it. I cut the 12 by 12 car card stock, no, <laughs> chipboard duck on it chipboard into five by nine inch rectangles then I kind of looked at the uh, thickness of the signatures to de determine how wide I wanted the spine to be so there are some that are three quarters of an inch wide which I used from the leftover strips from cutting the original five by nines and some of them are one inch, some are three quarter inch. So I just, oh, and these, uh, the spacers are one quarter inch each because I wanted to be able to open the book flat. So in order to do that, you need a little give. I'm learning. <laughs> All right, so there's my, there's my spine. Well, the first of the spine. Then we're going to do another one on the outside of the book later to cover up. It'll be decorative. And then I'm going to push these guys kind of together. And then I'm going to make it straight with the edge of the ruler to make sure they're kind of even. And even if they're not perfect, it's okay. I'm, no one's going to buy these. This is just strictly for my pleasure. All right, I put a little bit of the painter's tape at the top because I notice when I do this that I tend to wiggle stuff. And in order to keep that from happening, so these stay in the proper spacing. So when I take the spacer out... They stay the same. Sorry, my phone's on. Okay, so I'm going to take the spacer out. And then um, I was gifted this book tape. It's basically like the packing tape that you get from Amazon on your boxes. It has threads through it. Very sturdy tape, and I love it for doing books. And look at that. I moved my, my thing right there. Uh -uh -uh. Okay. So I'm going to take a large roll of this, and I'm just kind of rolling it out and eyeballing it, and I moved it again. Doggone it. Scissors. I'm going to cut this off. You have to wet it in order to use it. So I have a little bottle of water here. And I did label it H2O. That's something I learned from teaching food sanitation in a culinary school, is everything that's in a bottle needs to have some sort of labeling because what if this is bleach and you spray it on something thinking it was water? It might ruin something. So you always label the bottle so you can remember what's on the inside. All right, so I moved my little jiggy here. So I'll put my spacer back in to make sure, there we go, that it's good. All right, there's that. Then I'm gonna spritz this, you know, about a nine inch wide swath. I'm going to lay it down, just kind of eyeball it. It does not need to be perfect. I just want to make sure it covers up the gaps. And then I'm going to take the tape off, smooth it down. And as I smooth it down with the bone folder, I go in here 
and to make my crease. This is what makes it easy to open and close and lay flat, is that gap in between the spine and the book front and back. Okay, I can take this off now. Whoops. And I'm gonna flip it over. And you can see it's got a nice little gap. I'm gonna spritz the water here, pull it down tight. And again, do this because the back side of this will glue to the back side of the other one. It will stick to it. Press it down a little bit. Switch it around. Give it a little spritz with the water. I tried doing this with painting the water on and honestly, <laughs> it was a total disaster. So this is the way that works the best for me. This and then here. And so this opens and closes nicely either direction. So it'll be a nice book. Let me see. This was for the yellow one. I measured it for the yellow one. Um, so when I put this in the middle, when I open the book, I can open, this will go in the middle, and I can open it up flat. And that was my main goal for doing the spacers, is so that it could open up flat in case I wanted to do anything else to it, put something in, take something out, work on it. You know, sometimes you have inspiration after you sew it in the book, and you're like, oh crud, I can't get it in there. So I decided to make these so there was a fourth of an inch gap I think usually people do like an eighth of an inch gap, but I didn't want my book to have alligator mouth once I finished it. And when you add the uh, spacer in here and you're cutting this to a nine, like for me it was a nine inch, you might need to subtract off your nine inch calculation according to the spacers because that pushes this measurement out past the original nine inch that I thought would be sufficient. So now, I mean five inch, I cut the width as five inches. But if you lay it down like this and you see the gap in it, this one is now five and a quarter. So now each one of these is, this and this are actually five and a quarter. You've added half an inch to this overall. So it, when you look at it from this direction, there's your half an inch gap. I don't mind, but some people like it to be totally flush. I actually don't need it to be that flush, and I really don't want to go back and try to figure out how to cut uh, a quarter of an inch off of each one of these sides because it has already got the spine on it, and I don't want to go back and redo it. I could go back and cut each one of these a quarter of an inch off the outside, but I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to leave it in there like this, and that way, when it's in the bookshelf, nothing gets crumpled on this. All my tabs are secured. The top will have a little bit of fringy stuff, you know, the tag thingies, doodahs as I call them. So. It'll be a little bit on the bottom, probably about an eighth of an inch here and an eighth of an inch here, and that's fine. I don't really care. It won't scuff the bottom of my pages on the top, and it won't scuff them on the bottom. So I'm going to leave this the way it is. Yes, this is kind of annoying that I forgot to do this part, and I'm still thinking that I could take a quarter of an inch off, but that means I have to cut it off of two, four, six, two, four, six, eight. I have to make 10 cuts at a quarter of an inch each. Now the determination for this is how lazy am I? <laughs> if I'm going to cut it, I need to do it before I cover the books. Because once you cover it, you, that, that's, you can't do that. I will not cu cut the height, that's fine, but I think maybe because of the spacers and the gap in between the spacer, this part here. Um, possibly I need to go back and shave a quarter of an inch off of each one. I don't know. I'm going to uh, finish putting all these. I've done, this is the yellow. The green is in three quarters of an inch spine and it, you know, probably another a quarter of an inch could go off of this one. 
These two are the purples, and again, probably another quarter of an inch off the edge. Although there is lace sticking out on here, so I'm a little nervous about cutting that. But there's three quarters of an inch. No, this one's an inch. The ones that have two um, signatures are an inch. The single signatures are three quarters of an inch. So there are four of the five. One inch, one inch, three quarter, three quarter. And then I still have the pink one and I will be done constructing this. And then I will think about the quarter inch off of all of the edges there. I probably will do it. I said I wasn't going to, but I think I will. Yep, probably will. You know, pfft, lot mistakes make liars of us all. <laughs> all right, so when I get back, I will show you the quarter inch shaved off. Okay, so I did, as I said I would not do, <laughs> is cut a quarter of an inch off of the front and back covers of every one of them. So, you know, if you're smart, which I never have said I am, you would save these to use as spacers in future projects. I, I think that's probably a good idea. Maybe this is an eighth of an inch. What are these? Nope, it's a quarter. Okay. So these are bit good spacers in the future. You only need a few of them. You know, you don't need to save 50 of them, but there's, there's that. And then here are all the signatures for the Color Travels Journal, whatever we call it. I don't know. So there they all are. You can see the ones that are fatter are the ones with the two signatures. One, two, two, one. So there they all are. Let's see. We can look at them this way. There we go. And the tops. They look pretty good, I think. We'll see. Um, the next thing to do is to cover them. And I'm going to go ahead out of, I have some of this leftover stuff. I am going to go ahead and cut as many of the cover pieces to cover where they're stitched in as I can out of these two pieces right here. There's no point in wasting this because I've already used 10 sheets of... Um, 12 by 12 chipboard. <laughs> I got it right this time. <laughs> Okie do. So, um, let's see. There will be a gap when I come back in uh, process. When I come back the next time, I probably will have the majority of these covered. Um, and then I'll leave one and then I'll show how I covered one. I mean, it's not exciting but I will show you how I covered one. It'll probably be one that only has one signature in it. And I will um, I will have all of these cut for the spines for the decorative stitching. And that should be it. So I will see you guys in a few minutes. Well for you it will be instantaneous. For me it might be a couple days. Okay so this portion will be where I'm creating the paper for the covers. I bought some I guess you call it painting paper from Ikea and I think it was like $3.99 or $4.99 for the roll and I just roll it off on an as needed basis. I need to do it this way. And then I'm cutting it because I know I'm going to need more than a more than what I usually need, like you know bits. So I'm going to roll it off here, and I'm going to cut it on the end, which you cannot see because it's out of frame. And then I'm going to show you what I do with it next. All right, so this is big, huge piece of paper. It's bigger than a 12 by 12. What is all of this stuff up here? It's bigger than a 12 by 12 piece of paper. All right, and I'm going to start using my favorite color green, and this is how I've been doing my covers. I've been just taking regular, uh, this is a Memento stamp pad, and just stamping it. Uh, this is a, um, what size is this? The biggest jelly plate from, Jelly Arts. I honestly can't tell you. I just know it's a jelly plate. It's 11 by 14 or 12 by 11 or something like that. So I'm just taking all my greens and I really can't see if this is stamping on here or not, but I'll see in a second. 
This is pear, memento pear tart. And I just blot it on here. And I really don't care if it's harem scarum. I think the more harem scarum it is, the better it looks. All right, so I'm going to take the edge that's a little more straight and I'm going to line it up with the jelly plate and just press down on it. I have a ceiling fan going, so I have to do this rather quickly because the ink is going to dry very fast. And this is what I end up with. Wait, let me put it this way. I really like the way it looks. I like how it pools and there's blank spots, but those will be covered in because I have two more green ink pads. This one is stays on cactus green, and this is a dark green. And the cool thing is, I, I know it sounds very odd, I can't see what it's doing on the jelly plate. And that's how, that's why I got all those blank spots there. But they will all be filled in because I'm going to pile all this stuff one on top of the other. This is Olympia Green from Versafine. This is not really the best one to use on here because it's very opaque. It's not very translucent. It is very dark and scary. <laughs> but I thought that I should interchange the colors and shake it up a bit you know and I still have the original cloth that belongs on here I'm shocked because usually you know I lose stuff like that all right so I'm going to take this side which was the opposite we side we put on a minute ago I'm going to kind of line it up and press and hope that it sticks which I think it will Bada bing. And there we go. Compared to this side. Then I'm going to take um, this Memento Pear Tart and go all over the plate with this. I try to make them not too juicy because I don't want them to like spread. You know how something gets wet and it spreads out when the paper absorbs it? It's not the best quality paper, which I doubt this seriously, this Ikea paper is. So I'm doing this to fill in blanks. I'm going to do this on this edge. And I think they call this color blocking. I'll push this down. And look. Well, that look cool. I mean, I get all kinds of color on here. Now, I want to kind of make this dark green um, more blended in, and I will do that in a second. But for now, I think I'm going to use Pear Tart and go. I know there's a lot of pounding. I'm sorry for those of you who don't like the sound of pounding, but I have to get this on here. And if I if I smooth it on the the ink just does not go as go on as well when it's kind of smudged onto the, you know, if you slide it on there, it doesn't do as well. I could have used acrylic paint, but I just wanted to use these stamp pads. I saw this idea so many times on um, the Jelly Arts demo by lots of different people, and I like the way it looks, so I'm going for it. All right, so we're going to take this, put this over all these blank spots where the dark is. And if it overlaps, fine. I don't care. I want it to. And I will accept whatever it gives me. This is what I got. It's filling in a little bit more. I have too many sharp edges around here. I don't like all those kind of sharp edges. Like I said, what I do is I'm not... I know there's residue left on here, and I'm okay with that. I kind of like that. So I'm going to stretch my thing off here. I'm going to roll it off the end of my glass mat. Where's my cutter? And I'm going to cut it down the side. And look. <laughs> I got a nice green imprint. Fabulous. Okay, so I only have two shades of purple here in my arsenal. 
I have a Memento Lux Elderberry and I have Memento Lux Sweet Plum. So I do have a couple of the little teardrops. Let me see what colors I have in the teardrops. Oh, where's the other teardrop box? I know I had it a minute ago. What happened to it? Okay. Oh, here it is. Um, the only other one I have is lavender for the little teardrops. Memento Lulu Lavender. And then I have a little bit of the uh, grape jelly. I don't know if those are going to go well in here. But, you know, we'll give it a shot. So, let's start with elderberry. And again, I cannot see what I'm patting on here, so every time I make a print, it is a nice surprise. And if it's not a nice surprise, then we um, ink it up and do it right on top of what we just finished, and then it's a nice surprise. I'm going to do this whole thing here. And then I'm going to take the other one, which is the uh, sweet plum, which is a little less transparent, because I can kind of see it on the jelly plate. And now, just going to take a straight edge and kind of match it up. I don't really care if I don't get it on the edges. I only have um, each cover is 10 plus 1, which is 11, and then the spacers, which are a quarter inch each. I mean, it's less than 12 inches, but I'm doing this. Oh, lovely. I'm doing this in, um, you know, different colors and different widths and lengths and I, I didn't measure off this paper. I just kind of stretched it out across the desk, found a divot in the desk and then cut. That's all I did. Okay, we got that. I'm gonna take this and go down the middle. I need to put a little more juice in some of these. They're getting a little dry. I'm going to take this one. I'm not going to line it up exactly where I did the... I want it to overlap. I'm not going to line it up where I did the last one. This paper is... I don't think it's really shiny more on one side than it is on the other. See, these are very light. See the variations in the colors? I'm sorry, there's a shadow. It is uh, almost 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I have four different lights on, and it still makes shadows. I can't get it right. Alrighty. So then we're going to do something down the edge here, which I think I want to do the sweet plum because I would like a little dark. So I'm just going to do it kind of a straight line down this way so that it will fill in another spot on here and overlap some of the color. Alrighty, so I only want to do it right here on the edge. And I'm going to kind of line it up visually. Let's see what it looks like. Here we go. There's another one. See how it overlapped and made it darker? I like it. And then we're going to try some... This stuff is so small, I can't... I think I might have to do this on a small plate because it's just not going to work. Elderberry. I don't think it's going to work because it's so small. And what I'll do is I'll take a little um, 5x7 or 8x10 jelly plate, cover the whole thing with the little small memento teardrops, and then place those st strategically on here. Let's do this. Oh, it's very light. There we go. Okay. Let's do 
the sweet plum down the middle where I can see it. I think this makes five pages I've done. I've worked on the covers today. And then I've done the papers. I've knit a little bit, made egg drop soup. I've had a lot of busyness going on today. I vacuumed, cleaned out the litter box. E-I-E-I-O. <laughs> okay, there we go. So I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a small plate. Oh, I need to sit down. Let me go get the small plate so I can sit down. All right. And I think maybe I might need some grape jelly right there. So we're gonna, well actually no, I can use this one. Okay, we're gonna stick this one right here, because we can. Over. Give her a good rub. And there we go. See, so it's it's multi-dimensional with the different colors. I think I need something here. And I need a little something here. Um, let's cover this up. I don't want that to dry out. Alright, let's try this one. It is kind of light, but let me try the elderberry. And I probably will have lots of paper left over. I want to cover the outside and the inside book. That's why I did such big pieces of paper because I want to use what's on the outside on the inside. I'm sorry I'm all out of screen, but I wanted to plop it over for the ceiling fan, dried it out. There we go. So it gave a little more depth this way, and then it gave this a little more interest here. Now I need to do one down the middle on this section here. And I think, which way I want to do it then? Um, let's do the, uh, what's this called? Lulu Lavender. might regret this. I don't know. We'll see. I probably should get grown-up pads. <laughs> and I have all the inkers for these too, so I should use those after doing this. Make sure that they're nice and juicy the next time I need them. All right, so I'm just going to flop this over right here. Oh, let's don't do it that way. Okay, now I have 7,000 ink pads on my desk. See what you got. Well, it didn't do it as dark as I would like, but it gave it a little more. It is very light, but I would like the colors to overlap. I don't like this right here. So, um, I am going to use. What is this? Sweet plum. Yeah, this sweet plum. It's gonna go right down the middle. And a little bit, well, I think I'll do about two thirds of the pad. I mean, of the jelly plate there. And then I'll put it on here like this. Flop her over. Ordinarily, I would not be flopping the papers back and forth, but I'm running out of room on the desk right now, and I'm sitting down, so. Okay, let's see what we get. Oh, a little less white. There we go. I like that. There's all kinds of different shades and levels of color. And when I cut this up, I will try to cut it where they are the most interesting if I possibly can. Okay, so that is it for the covers. Doing the covers, the next 
video or next section of the video will be laying the covers down and gluing them onto the chipboard so that we can finish these books. Yay! <laughs> okay, so I wanted to come back and show you how I cut the colored paper up that I showed you earlier that I did with the stamp pads. This is, the, I've done all the others. I've done four others. This is the last one of the group. This is the green one. And um, all I've done is take taken this and I took a ruler, which I will pull out somewhere under the desk. And I more or less stuck the ruler on the top and sliced the paper, did on the sides, sliced the paper, so on and so forth. Because I wanted to have enough overlap here that I can make sure that if I cut something around here that I will have plenty of coverage on all the sides. So now, this stuff. And I have to tell you, <laughs> I debated whether or not to use this description, but to be honest with you, it's very true. This stuff reminds me of Vaseline. I'm sorry, it's 10 after 4 in the morning and the lights, there you go, lighting, you know, it. Oh, dark 30 is not so great, but this reminds me of like a sticky Vaseline. Um, but you know, you can't, you can't beat it with a stick. It's really good. I take a card and just scrape it over. I tried the paintbrush thing, but honestly, it's just not me. Um, that's too dainty. <laughs> I just can't ruins my paintbrushes. That's another reason why. And I tried to blob it on here, especially in the crevices or the where the uh, book moves, opens and closes, the valleys, whatever you want to call it, spine, because that gets a lot of wear and tear when the book opens and closes. Not that these will be open and closed a lot, but in theory. So I just kind of Break it on here, just dip this in here and then break it on. And I like PVA glue, but to be honest with you, Yes Paste, as much as I find it kind of gross, works really well. And with my ceiling fan on, it stays the wettest the longest. And for me, right now when um, it's not humid outside and it's starting to dry out real quick, I like this. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to keep from touching too much of this stuff because I think it's gross. All right, so then I flip it over. And kind of smooth it out with the uh, bone folder that is feeling very gross because it's done others and I need to wash it off so I just go through here so I can force this into the paper on the other side and I didn't do a very good job on the corner here on there. Yes, I see it coming out the sides, but it's okay. I will wipe it off with a napkin. Then I flip it back over again and I make sure I know where this is so I can run the bone folder in here. Now I did get a little carried away on the pink one, so I have a, so here's the pink one. I have a scuff mark here that I'm gonna need to cover up with ink. Can you, there we go. I'm gonna need to cover that up with a little bit of ink to smooth it out. But otherwise I thought it looked pretty good. It, it opens up well. I need to press down a little more in here. I've left, I made these last late last night and left these to dry. So here's the pink one. So I think it's going pretty well. 
And I have lots of paper left over, which is excellent, so I can do the insides of the books. And then I just keep smoothing it to make sure you got more or less should be going from the inside outward to push the glue out. I don't always do it that way, not gonna lie. <laughs> I feel a bump right there where the glue is concentrated. I can feel it. And there's a bump right there. When, when the bone folder kind of slows down, you know there's a, some kind of a bump of glue right there. All right. And sometimes after I do that, you can see that the glue has come out on the edges there. And then I bend it to make sure. And I kind of mash down on here. Then I take it back this direction. And I do this again to make sure that this is really obvious where the fold is. So that when I open and close the book, I don't run into cracking. And it still may crack, but I do the best I can. Considering this is going to be covered up, but this isn't. I mean, the, the valley where it goes, the crease is, is not going to be covered up. You're going to see this every time you open and close the book, so I want it to look decent. And I'll go back again. See, this has got a pucker. I try to work that into the... This one's a little more difficult. And I say difficult, but it's a little more of a challenge because the spine on this one is only three-fourths of an inch. This is one of the one, there's, there's only one signature here. All right, so there's that one. I'm going to leave it to dry. Let me close up this yes paste. This stuff is so gross. I've had this thing for a couple of years. It's just gross. <laughs> it's just gross. I just don't, I don't like the texture of it. I don't like the look of it, but boy, does it work. I mean, you know. All right, so the next part, and I think I'm gonna do this on the pink book because this needs to dry. Next part is to fold up. All right, so there are several ways I've seen this done. Is I've seen people cut very thin strips in between the folds here so the middle section will fold up. And that uh, then it will be another piece that'll fold up this way and then you'll have these two pieces on either side. But I never get it cut very well. So I don't usually do mine that way until after I will cut, sometimes I might cut from here like this to give it a little less pressure on it. But I hate cutting it folded up like this because then you have these little bits of pieces right up here at the top that look like you cut it. <laughs> they don't look so good. So, um, let's see what's next. Oh yes, we have to do the corners. Let me get my tools. Okay, in previous video, videos, you remember that I bought these, I told you guys I bought these off of Amazon, and these are different thicknesses because the um, chipboard that you use are different thicknesses, and that sometimes will determine what kind of edge you have left over to use to fold with. So I um, uh, used a giant rubber band. Good Lord. Um, and so what I do is I just go through here and see... And I run my finger over here to see if I feel it, and this is too thick. This is too tall, so I think I need a shorter one. Do I have a shorter one in here? Nope, still too thick. So the other one I tried... Nope, too much. Okay, so the first one is uh, one and a half. This is two... I think the one and a half is going to be the smoothest one for the height of the chipboard. And you can run your finger over it. When it's smooth going across here, you know you've picked the right height. 
I still think this is too much paper on the side, but I do like how this works. A lot of people have those co uh, copper or brass edges. Whoop, let me put this on here better. See, and so it helps you determine how much paper you have at the edge here to, to fold over to cover your corner. I think these are very, very handy little tools considering they're plastic. I think they work really well. And then, I don't know about you guys, but since I'm not the greatest at folding here in the beginning when I was learning, I would take these edges and I would glue them in here because sometimes I did not have enough that these corners would meet and to make sure the color didn't show like I didn't have a gap I would take these corners and I would glue them in here like this with the with the color up so that if I had a gap you could still see the pink in the middle I don't have to do that anymore because I have these because I have these these plastic tools these plastic corner thingies. I don't have to do that. This one is a 1.5. And then I just rubber band them all. Whoops. I just put them all together with the rubber band and put them in a drawer and that's where they stay until the next time when I need to use them. All right, so I'm gonna fast forward through this part because look at all the shadows. Um, I'm gonna fast forward through this part. <laughs> and then um, I'll talk later. everyone, it's Vicki from Messy Table Studio here with an update on the Color Traveler's Journals because, you know, one wasn't enough. <laughs> so, I have a surprise! Ta-da! There they are, all done! Woohoo! I did them all in one day with the, um, the inside covers and sewing them in because I could. I wanted to get them done. I just didn't want to be one of these unfinished projects that lingers for years and years. I wanted to make sure that they got finished. So here they are, the collection that was supposed to be one book. <laughs> Dunk on it. And now I have to figure out if I want to decorate on the insides or if I want to leave them plain or leave the outside plain. Um, so I did measure and when I bought the 12 by 12 cardstock, I completely forgot that I could have made this into one book. But to be honest with you, I'm kind of glad I didn't because I measured the very bottom of the books and kind of squished them together. And they are six inches across. Now that would be a heck of a book. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of glad I don't have them in, um, in all in one place. I, I think that the five with the seven total signatures is good enough. I probably could have made two signatures in each one of these that are only one, but I, I think this is probably enough. <laughs> enough! 
All right, so let me show you the next part. If you remember in a previous video, I just rolled out paper and cut it. Well, you didn't see that part, but you saw the large pieces of paper that I was doing the stamps on. So here are all the leftover pieces from those giant pieces of paper that I did. And then I saved, you know, it's a saver's world. Um, I saved all these other pieces so that I could use them in uh, fodder for other projects, cut them out, doodle on them, use them for the size of pages, etc., etc. So I have been cruising Pinterest looking for the um, very fancy stitching on the edge, on the, on the, spines of books I am still looking and will continue to look and when I start to stitch I will record all that but I wanted to show you that I did finish the books themselves and now the only thing that's left is embellishing the spines and possibly doing something on the inside and outside covers although I'm not really leaning towards that so that is it if you guys have any questions or comments or suggestions for the embellishment on the inside and outside that might change my mind, put the comments down below and let me know. Thanks everybody for going through the whole series with me. If you need a flip, one last flip of everything, leave me a comment and I will do a video with a final flip of all the, um, all the things again, all the journals again. So thanks for watching everyone. I really do appreciate it. And the fact that you leave comments. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.